Hey everybody, it's good to see you again. Welcome back to my YouTube channel, and I'm sorry I've been gone so long. So, it's been six months uh, since I've really filmed anything in the aquariums or anything else for that matter. But, um, I just posted that, uh, that video from six months ago. So, now it's time to update you on where I am now that you know six months have passed since the last video and since we're now a year in on the red sea reefer 250 so as to where i've been um you know i've been back to a we were back to work like right away so um we were working more and more hours and less and less time off and then we started finally getting our time out our time off again but um that was right before christmas so I was just getting ready for Christmas, and I go to Florida every year for Christmas, so I had to get all my stuff together for Christmas, then I was gone for December, and, but never mind all that, I'm back now, and I'm going to start trying to make videos on the regular again, so uh, let's get to the tanks. So we'll start with what's changed with the 250. Um, we got one of the goeys poking his head out. But the clowns, I was going to tell you about how they have never really hung out much together since I put them in the tank, but here they are hanging out together. Um, so of the engineer gobies, there were three, there are now two. Uh, I don't know what happened to the third. Um, the coal tang passed, um, so I no longer have that. Um, I'm definitely having an algae problem. You can see it in here and you know what? Let me go get the phone so I can change these lights. All right, so I've got the lights to a funky setting that I normally would never use, but it shows up pretty well on camera. So the immediate change you can see is there are two rainbow bubble tip anemones in here as opposed to one. And in fact, uh, that one, which is the original, which has not moved from the spot I originally put it in, first split off this one here, and then it sp split off into a third one. And I'll put pictures of all that up in here as we go. Um, I, have be I have been having a bit of an algae issue. And most of it really came while I was gone for Christmas, because I went to... Uh, Florida for a couple of weeks and left the tank in care of uh, one of the neighbor's kids. Um, before I did that, I did a water change and my salt, um, my salt went out of whack. And then also while I was gone, the uh, power quit. So for the last three or four days of my vacation, the main circulation pump was not running at all. But um, the anemones split and seem really good and okay. Um, the Phantom is always hosting in them and defending them. You know, if you stick your hand in there, you'll see what he does. Yeah, he'll come right for it. Just trying to keep you away from his anemone. Uh, the Picasso here doesn't really do much besides hang out in the corner. Always being really friendly today. Uh, conch is doing good. Still got a bunch of these blue hermit crabs. Sir snails are doing good. Near right snails are doing good. You can see them on the back there. I don't know if that's what was laying these eggs or whatever. But something lays eggs everywhere in here. But I don't see any baby anything. So... I don't know if they're getting eaten or if they're just not viable or what. Um, the galaxy coral. That's all that's left of my galaxy coral. And yeah, I don't really... I don't really know what to say. Um, looks like I am just really terrible at keeping anything stony. So anything stony is gone. Uh, the hammers, the torch, all that's gone. Um, in addition to this green algae I have... I also picked up bubble algae and 
possibly by Ropsis, I think. So I'm going to have to figure out what to do about that. Um, I don't know if dosing more chemicals is a problem. Maybe dosing less of the of the um, AB plus or what. So I got a second of these frag racks. Um, because I think I've decided at this point. That since the only thing I am good at keeping is anemones. I'm just going to do anemones. Even though. I did, in fact, lose the acid wash bubble tip that was over here in the corner. As far as Aptasia, um, I've seen one since that last video, and it was on that uh, firework clove polyp again. So I don't know why they keep growing there, but that's the only spot I've ever seen them in. So, But the uh, bubble algae has pretty much gone everywhere. Um, got the Ghani still kind of looks good. Uh, since I moved it up here, it doesn't extend as much anymore, but it still looks pretty good. Um, this was the Duncan. Like I said, everything stony died on me. Uh, generally got um, brown jelly disease. And hey, look, a pod. Let's see if he shows up on camera. Uh, the zo or the um, pardon me the uh, these captain jerks I thought they were zoanthids but they look like pallies but I also had the uh, the bam bams I had them down on a rock here and then they came off their frag and I've kind of lost them down on a rock work here somewhere so they're gone um, you can see the biropsis it's taking over that far frag there it's also taking the one with the rainbow or with the um, watermelon recordy on it which is kind of forced the recordy to retreat let's switch back over to the other side uh, i still have a carpet anemone it is in that crack there you're not going to be able to see it but um i thought it was gone for six months because i hadn't seen it and then all of a sudden it popped up again uh, speaking of what else other popped up uh, a couple weeks ago, I got a look at the uh, horseshoe crab. So he's still alive and he's doing quite well. He's much bigger. Um, I'm putting the video in right here. So, um, yeah, it was how he looked and how he looked the other day when I saw him pop out and kind of swim around for a second. Um, the starfish, the sand sifting starfish, I have not seen in six months. Or maybe not six months, but it's been a while and it's been dropping limbs, so I'm afraid it's gone. Let's see what we got left over in this other frag rack. So, the giant blue one that I found at that local shop near where I work. Kind of attached itself to the front of the, of the frag rack. Since that happened, uh, I had to clean the frag rack at some point, so I pulled it off the frag rack and glued it to a frag. Well, it immediately came off the frag, and it now lives there on the back of the frag rack. But it seems much happier, so it's starting to fill out and and looking good again. Um, this little recordia here was the one that was on this rock here in the front. Of course, it came unglued, or the rock broke down or something. But um, it wasn't looking very well, so I moved it up here because some of the other ones look... Some of the other ones that are up here are doing pretty good. Uh, this Yuma here... Keeps growing different kinds of algae. This was probably the source of the bubble algae, and it looks like it still is. I mean, at this point, the bubble, the bubble algae is everywhere, and you just can't see most of where it is. Every now and then, you'll see it, you'll see a bubble or two. But um, I did pick up some emerald crabs. I'll put pictures of them in here because I don't know where any are presently. Um, well, actually, I put two emerald crabs in here, and one of them immediately died. So, 
planning on picking up another one if I can find one. So down here in the sump, um, I did pull this um, float switch up for the time being because that's the one that, uh, that disables the pump when the thing floats up, which is the exact opposite of what I want it to do. So uh, you might notice that um, the Cato Max light with my makeshift hood is gone and it's been replaced by this uh, Kessel H80. And uh, that's because the Cato Max just quit one day. And so, I don't know. But um, down here in the bottom, this brick at some point got moved to the middle. And that really seemed to improve how everything went down here. So I've kind of left it that way. Uh, Cato Ball's doing good. It is really starting to see growth with the Kessel on it. So it is a much better light and I'm much happier for it. So that's where I'm at after about a year with, in, uh, with the Red Sea Reefer 250 here. Uh, it's, it's going all right. Um, I gotta say I did have hopes when I bought this tank that just having the newer, better equipment was going to be the answer to all my problems. And it really hasn't. So uh, I don't know if it's my water or what, but I definitely can't keep anything, any kind of stony coral. And that's just the way it is. Unless I maybe do some, uh, maybe if I start dosing some calcium or magnesium, but then I'd have to test my water more often. So I have, I do think I'm going to buy a set of Hanna checkers so I can uh, have like a nice quick instant reading and be able to better control my parameters through chemistry, I guess. So as I mentioned, the rainbow bubble tip and enemy in the 250 has split twice now. So the one split remains in the 250 and I put the third split here in the cube the green star polyps have really started to spread once it hit the rock because the way I had it glued it didn't have enough space to to really straight touch the rock from the, the from the um, frag so it had to kind of go under the frag hit the bottom and then spread out to the rocks. But once it got on the rocks uh, where the lights are, it started to really take off. Plus the Reef AB Plus. I mean, this stuff really loves it. I moved the uh, Pulsing Zinnia from the 250 over to here. And let me see if I can do something with these lights to make them show up better. There, that's closer to life, so. Pulsing Xenia, uh, most people see them as a pest, but um, they're all right. And if you catch them at the right time of night, you can really see them start to pulse. So I think I'm going to put a time lapse on it tonight so we can catch that when it happens. Uh, the carpet and enemy moved and right there from the ground. And it looks pretty good. I try and feed it, but uh, the hermit crabs that are in here are, I mean, they're just vicious. They're on food as soon as it's in the tank. Um, bristle worms. So I don't see bristle worms in this tank anymore. Uh, with the exception of the kraken or whatever big worm monster, I'm pretty sure is still in here. Because I think I've seen it sticking out of the bottom of this rock here the other day uh the hector's goby that you saw in the last video lasted about two weeks it seemed quite happy it mostly hung out here in the back munching on this grass that grows back here but um i came back one day and he was gone so yeah here's that um i still have these fallen enemies all around down here but they don't bother me and I don't bother them. 
clownfish are doing okay. Uh, what else has happened to this? So the heater on this had quit. So I've now replaced the heater. I have this, uh, this Finex Smart Therm heater with a digital readout, which is really nice. Because now I can know exactly what temperature of the tank is just by looking at it from the outside. I don't have to pull up the, uh, the little thermometer I have stuck in the back. So yeah, that's pretty much where the tanks are at now. The uh, planted tank upstairs, the big dumb bed had finally died on me. But um, beyond that, there's really nothing to see up there. It's still just plants at this point. Plants with a snail and a, couple, and a fish that doesn't ever come out. So um, the only other one thing I wanted to say here is um, if you take a look at this, this is the results of my failures. Of all the corals I bought for this tank over the course of the year that did not survive. So something to think about if you have tanks of your own. If you're just starting to get into the tank thing, just kind of take it slow because, I mean, several of these had you know, decent price tags on it. I mean, that was an elegance. Uh, what else? So, um, this was the Galaxy Coral. You know, another 25 bucks there. Elegance was probably 50, 75 bucks. Uh, I can't even tell what some of these were, but, you know, hammers. There were or torches, whichever that was. There were like three of them. We're talking 40 bucks a piece. You know, that, that kind of money really adds up. So uh, something to think about, you know, take it easy. When you're adding stuff, make sure your water's gonna be okay for a, stony, for a stony type coral before you go ahead and throw in 20 of them, you know. So learn from my mistakes. Don't make them yourself. Uh, uh, like and subscribe. There should be a lot more interesting stuff. That's kind of I've been kind of rushing through this video, if you noticed, but that's because I'm gonna go out in the garage and I'm gonna film a car video, and I might even film a different video later on today. So like I said, I'm trying to get back into it, but I still have work going on, and I'm leaving for Florida next weekend. So. More about that, you know, because there's going to be videos coming for that. So stay tuned and uh, I'll see you next time.